All right. Um, so today we're gonna dive in into chapter four, which is autograd. And um basically um the objectives of the chapter is to show us what is autograph and to understand why do we need it, um, and also derivative of uh, uh, any function and whatsoever. So we can see um, autograd, basically we know we have many um, frameworks to do deep learning, machine learning and so forth. Um, but what makes these frameworks like PyTorch more popular is because you can do a lot with them. Um, so you can do deep learning, machine learning, optimization, landscape, all this stuff you can do is, for example, PyTorch. But one thing that brings all these, um, you know, uh, uh, activities, for example, to do machine learning, uh, deep learning optimization, is one thing that brings them all together is we are trying to minimize the loss function always. And um, to minimize the loss function is to calculate what we call derivatives. So when we calculate the derivatives of a function, as some way we'll um, you know, uh, see how we can minimize the loss by looking at the direction of the, uh, you know, that we can move on. So touch and many other, for example, tens, um, uh, TensorFlow, they implement what we call automatic differentiation or autograd that allow you to automatically find the derivative and subsequently um, minimize the loss, right, um, in some ways. So that's what autograd does. Um, we all know in uh, some basic, uh, you know, uh, background, maybe in high school or university, we do, uh, for example, derivative of a function and, you know, all these, you know, mathematical stuff. So they are really useful um, because we employ them to reduce the and my loss. So this is an example I really like that is just put in this. So um, just to iterate what that means. So for example, we know if we have an input X and we have the target value Y. We know in deep learning is just connection of layers, right? Layer one, layer two, and whatsoever. And when we have an input, um, we make some transformation, mathematical transformation. You know, it goes through many layers. That's where we have uh, multi-layer, you know, all these deep neural networks. So we have many layers and now we make predictions, right? Now, if this is pre true target and this is prediction, then we find the loss functions. That is, for example, if the true target, the true is 3.0, but the prediction is 2.0, then we find the loss. So maybe the loss is 1.0, right? Because the true is three and the prediction is two, then the loss is one. That is, we find the difference between the true and prediction, right? That is y minus y hash, y dash, meaning you know the prediction minus true. And then um, we can calculate the loss score. Um, then now when we calculate these, how can we reiterate? Because in deep learning, what we are trying to do is we continuously uh, you know, make prediction and trying to reduce this loss. So for example, the first example now I give, we have an input, we make prediction is two and the two target is three. Now this loss is a loss function that find the difference. Now this loss score um, is trying to see how can we now reduce this, uh, you know, this loss from 1.0, how can we reduce it maybe to turn into 0 0.5 so that the next prediction maybe maybe 2.5, you know, better so now we need to do some kind of backward propagation here what well, that is the where we do what we call derivative so this derivative on the loss score it allow us to find you know how can we update some weight and bias here to update you know our la next layer and make next prediction so this is basically just you know um a way um okay you want to talk something I didn't say anything, but we just, uh, it looks like Zadie just joined. Oh, okay, okay. So this is something, um, you know, I um, just get a mental model on, you know, how this deep learning, how we do that. So we make prediction. Um, this is our true target. We find the loss between these. Now we use some score functions and now try to see, okay, um, how can we 
of you know update this prediction in the next iteration because we do iterate so that our loss function is very slow. So I don't know, Amanda, if you have any wanna add something here. No, that's a nice picture. I like it. Okay. Where did you <laughs> yeah. find it? Um, I found it in um, Deep Learning with Python book. Okay. Yeah, it's really um, it really explained this thing this thing really really well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, yeah. So it, it, because this explanation here that uh, you know from here, uh, you can see what this. So why compute derivatives? So why do we need to compute derivatives? So we here we said um, um, uh, most of the application min involve minimizing the loss function. And this entails computing function derivatives. So if we want to basically reduce a loss, some loss, so we need to compute the derivative, you know, to reduce a loss in some ways. So why do we need that? The computation of derivative in neural network is essential for training the model through a process called backpropagation. So this process from here, going back here to, you know, update the value of weight and bias is what we call, you know, backpropagation. And um, the idea is to minimize the error between the predicted output and the actual output. So you can see the predicted output. You can see the actual output. Now, backpropagation is how can we update these weights and bias so that we can make next prediction so that the prediction will be close to the value of the target. So we continuously up keep updating these weights and bias so that the next prediction will be closer. So for example, if the uh, first prediction, as I give an example, um, we have the true target is three and the first prediction is two. Then we update the weights and the way, the prediction may be, the next prediction may be 2.3. So you can see we are getting closer to the target. Then we update the weight. Uh, the next prediction may be 2.4. Um, after we update this weight, maybe close to the target. The next prediction may be 2.6. The next prediction may be 2.8, getting closer to the target. But who is telling us which direction are we going to update these weights so that the next prediction will be closer to the target? That is, you know, um, what we call gradient descent that will come. So you can see the idea is to minimize the error between the predicted output and this. Derivative helps us to understand how much weight and bias in the network contribute to the error. So you can see this is a very, so the derivatives that we can take on the loss function help us to understand how much each weight and bias in the network to contribute that contribute the error. So for example, now we have the true value is three and now the prediction is two. Now, what, you know, how can we update this weight? What contribute this error? So the derivative will tell us, you know, how much each previous weight contributed the error so that you can adjust the weight accordingly. So uh, by adjusting these weights and bias in the direction that minimize the error, the model becomes more accurate over time. So you can see basically this is what um, you know uh, training deep learning works uh, does. We keep updating, changing the weight here. You can see there is no um, uh, uh, we have weight only, no bias. But you know we have every every time you have bias in each layer, right? Um, we have the weight, we have bias, weight and bias. So um, you know, and we have something optimized that will be discussed later. So when we are aware of the current loss, so what we are aware of the current loss here. Uh, an algorithm can adjust its parameters. So we can adjust the parameters um, here. Uh, that is a weight in the neural network in order to deliver better predictions. It just has to know in which direction to adjust them. This information is made possible by the gradient, the vector. So uh, this definition, uh, you know, on how we can change uh, these, you know, weights is made possible by the gradient. Um, yeah, so anyone wants to add something? Uh, Amanda or Zay? Okay. Nope, you're doing good. All right. Um. So, what's gradient descent now? So, because we said um we need to you know do uh, employ some algorithm gradient based algorithm that needs um that you know calculate these you know changes back propagation. Uh, we have many gradient based algorithm. So one of the um you know uh very simple gradient based is called gradient descent. It's the most basic optimization algorithm in deep learning, and um. It helps us, you know, to find, you know, uh, the most steepest descent that we can move to reduce the error. We have a bunch of algorithms, I think maybe in the later chapter we can do. So they really gave an example here on this gradient descent here. Um, but um, uh, I'm not fancy all those mathematical 
Octagon, but my man, you are a mathematician, as they I know. <laughs> so I just like, you know, have transformed it like, you know, into, you know, um, just uh, uh, what they discuss in the book, how we can. So let's look at it. So here we have some this. Um, imagine you are on top of the hill and you are blindfolded. You are on top of the hill here and you are blindfolded. And your goal is to get to the bottom of the hill, right? So what I mean by this is that um, imagine we have a very large area and my, our idea is to go to the bottom to do the area, right? Now, how can we come from the bottom high era to the lower era? So this is just analogy. Imagine you're totally and your brain. Your goal is to get to the bottom here. So you can't see where you are going. But because if we are here, we have large era, we don't know the exact way to follow to come and minimize the error. But we need to move from here, maybe to here, you know, and finding some, you know, in some zigzag manner until we reach here in some way. So we need, because if we already know the direct routes, we can just follow a straight line, right? But we don't know. So how can we do that? The first step is you take a small step in the direction where the hill is steepest down. So we can take a small step, like, you know, step, small step. And then you fill the ground again to see which way is down. So when we come here, then you find which way is to come down again. Then again, uh, take another step in, the, in that direction, the new direction you find, and keep doing until you reach the lowest point. So in some mathematical form, it's explained in the book, this is what it's really doing. It just, we take a small step and now find what is the next direction to follow and now on to with it. So this is what we call um, gradient descent. Um, this is basically what a gradient descent and is this ex was explained beautifully in mathematical form in the book. But the main idea we wanna, uh, I, I wanna iterate um, because I don't wanna go into the mathematics is that, um, um, what we're doing is we just want to minimize the error. Um, then we have we are moving just down the uh, steepest uh, descent. Now, so let's go to um, Autograd um, by example. So um, when we talk about you know um, minimizing some function, um, always here as I give an example here, you have an input, and now whatever goes here is um, function in some ways. Uh, we always try to reduce it. So here, let's assume we have a function here. And we want to show you. So we want to see how autograd um, automatic differentiation is being done. So let's assume we have this function and the automatic di uh, differentiation uh, in PyTorch or Torch is represented by what we call, uh, what is this graph called? Um, um, anyway. Oh, okay, so um, it's just like um, it's representing. Okay, there is a name with this uh, graph. What is it called? Uh, uh, computational graph. Yes, yes, computational okay. graph. Yeah, so this is called computational graph. So what is happening here, we can see we have, for example, x1 here, and then we have x squared here, right? And then we have, uh, we multiply this by two, right? And then we have x2 here. So you can see each one here is a node, right? Each, so here we have, um, x squared, you can see, and we have 0 0.2, and now minus 5. So what this is showing is that this is computation. This is how computation is done is in Torch. Um, yeah, so this is called computational graph. So now let's see how we can implement this computational graph using Torch to, you know, do find, um, to find the derivative that is autograd to use automatic differentiation. So let's look at it. So we load our library Torch here. And now here we want to initialize the x1 here and x2, um, this one. Um, so you can see x1, uh, touch the tensor, um, x2, uh, we put 2, 2. So we initialize x1 is um, this and this. Um, here you can see the x1 and x2, we initialize them to any value, random value. So we you can initialize them with any scalar, scalar value, anything. So it's just the tensor, so we initialize them. But when you want to, um, you know, uh, create um, to do uh, automatic differentiation, for, you must put required grad equals to true. That is, um, you know, you want to do automatic differentiation. So um, that's what it means. So, for example, here, if you want to do deep learning and you want to input some x to layer one, you must put um, uh, automatic grad equals to true because you want to, you know, do automatic differentiation. So here we have automatic grad, um, auto grad equals to true. And now, 
yeah you can see that uh, but this autograd you only put it to the source tensor the tensor we initialize so here we can see x1 and s2 we put required grad equals to two now so we can see here now uh, what is x3 we multiply by two squared right so you can see here we can say x3 um you can see we square by it x1 squared right what is x5 we multiply by two here you can see um x5 is x3 that is the result that is coming out here right we multiply by two so you can see x3 by two by 0 0.2 i mean so you see we have these you know uh this node right now what about this one this one also we have you can see x4 is equals x2 squared um you can see x4 equals to x2 squared um then we have x5 x is uh, times 0 0.2 you can see that and now x7 what is x7 is we plus this and this and now minus five so you can see um we have this x5 so this is how when i run this so you can see this is a test answer and now when i uh, you can see x7 now this is how computational graph so in touch all the computations are represented in form of what we call computational graph because you can see this is not the same way in way that you see your mathematical expression if you are given x to y x squared plus x two. this is not how we represent them how we do the calculation right so this is what we call computational graph um so uh tensorflow they have the computational graph um I, I think there is what we, we call eager mode and is execute mode something like that um uh, here they didn't mention but uh, computational graph they have two version eager mode and execution mode something something like that but i can't figure out exactly what that means so um this is how we can see that so we have this so you can see we have uh, calculate this uh define this now when we so we have this finally x7 and you know that's the result so we calculate the whole this so how can we calculate now the uh, gradient of this function gradient so because this x7 um we have everything x7 it contain all these function the result of all these function because you can see the result of this all this function is where we save that is x7 you can see it's the result of x5 plus x6 minus 5 you can see that x7 um is equal to um x5 uh, plus x is minus five and x5 is all this x5 is this x is is this minus five then we store the result in x7 so that is x7 is the value of the so how can we find derivative differentiate derivative of x7 then the way we do is what we call um uh okay oh here we can see we said required grad it means uh yeah it uh, we in it, we we tell we tell because you can see here x1 and x2 we already said required grad is true so any computation we do along the way uh it must uh you know it has uh, uh it it has this uh, gradient attached with it so even um x53 um you can see that if we say x3 uh x3 and shows x3 no x3 um required grad you can see it's true uh even though we didn't assign x3 to be um you know required grad but it, they inherit from the source um you know stuff so um how can we you know find do auto grad the way you can do automatic differentiation um that is to find the derivative is just to go auto backward you just call backward so when we call this backward x7 um we can see um what's happening okay let me turn this um okay Okay, so here we can see we call um, x7 backward, right? We call backward. Now, this means that we now calculate the uh, 
we 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 perform automatic differentiation derivative and now when we call uh x1 and x2 we call the gradient we can see we have the value x1 and this so we now perform the uh gradient on it these are the partial derivative of x sub with respect to x1 and x2 so these are the partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2 because we just call um backward on x7 so it means we automatically find the automatic derivative of um you know x7 with respect to x1 and x7 so i don't know if uh, you want to add something amanda or there no i think that makes sense right so um we can see here now that x1 and x2 uh, we call grad on top of them and we can see the value, right? We can see the value. Um, so how about the accumulation process? For example, uh, we call only call on X1 and X2 grad, but what about X3 and X5? That is the intermediate X3, X4, X5, X6. Can we call grad on it? So that's what he's saying. How about the accumulation process? We said we needed to build up this end-to-end. -end. Can we follow the end, end as it's been built up? For example, can we see how the final output on X3? So when we call this um, on X3, uh, it will not show us the gradient. It only When we call backward, it will only calculate the derivative, derivative or gradient of the variable, we, the last variable not something intermediate. So when we call, when we have this computation graph and we calculate the, we call the backward here to calculate the derivative, um, we will we find the derivative of this with respect to X1 and X2. Um, so when we call grad, it shows that, but when we call X3 and X4, it will not show us. So that's what he's trying to say here. The pill does not seem to be populated just because touch throw away the intermediate aggregate once they are no longer needed to save memory. So what is happening is that touch, you know, delete the intermediate values, the gradient of the intermediate value because they are not needed. You only need this gradient, uh, the derivative of these ones to determine where you to move, uh, the direction to reduce the loss function. So, um, Yeah, so that's why he said, so the field does not seem to be populated. And, but if you want, uh, if we want what we need to do, if we want to return them, we can call what we call immediately after I call X3 uh, squared, we can call X3 return gradient. Um, therefore the next one, for example, here you can see we didn't call return gradient. We just call X3 and do go. But if you wanna see the subsequent, the intermediate gradient, uh, for X3, X4, you can call this return gradient here, return gradient and whatsoever. So here we can say return gradient, we can call them. And now when we said X3 required grad, um, we can see it's true. And when we call X3 here, we can see it give us the, uh, you know, the value here. So the same goes also for um, X5, X3, and um, they all have this. Uh, grad when we call the grad so um this is basically what the chapter is talking about um auto grad allow us to automatically uh, calculate the gradient of uh, functions without going through the uh, mathematical uh, ish, uh, stuff it automatically and easier you just call uh, backward and it automatically calculate all we need is just to calculate um, to call this backward on our, you know, it will calculate everything. So what we are saying here is that uh, the example I was talking about is uh, when you we have this, we have prediction, we have the loss function finally, and now we have the loss code. So we call gradient on these, you know, the loss um, uh, functions, um, you know, we call the gradient on the, we can create the derivative and therefore we can determine how we can update this word and whatsoever. All right, so that's my little understanding of the auto grad today. Um, if you want to add something, Amanda. Yeah, I think that's a pretty straightforward uh, chapter. So you did yeah. a good job presenting it. Thank you. 
Um, Zaid, any question or you want to add something? Right. Okay, good. So we have the next week um chapter. Uh, it's also pretty small. Um, anyone up to pick it up? Say, did you want to, or otherwise I can? Uh, I'm going to be traveling, so I'm not sure if I will make the meeting next week. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So Amanda, if um, okay, if you will take it, that's fine. Okay, I can do that. We'll have a small okay. meeting, but maybe we should yeah. meet anyway just to keep progress going. Oh, yes. Maybe yeah. you can watch the video or something later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, even though the chapter is quite small as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for coming. And uh, yeah. Okay, See you next thank time. you. Thank you, bye. bye.